from Washington State. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of you for being with us today and for taking the time. Um, this Congress, the Agriculture Committee, has been conducting what's been billed as a top to bottom review of programs like SNAP. And the title of today's hearing, How Welfare Benefits Can Discourage Work, makes me think that not enough of us have been listening. Um, SNAP doesn't discourage work. If anything, we've learned that the benefits aren't adequate enough. Um, Ms. Golden, your testimony talks about available workforce development funding in SNAP employment and training um, that is only used by a handful of states. In fact, my home state of Washington is one of the leaders in ENT programs. I introduced a bill last Congress that was the basis for $200 million in new SNAP ENT pilot programs in the Farm Bill. And I'm definitely proud that these pilots are based in part on criteria from Washington State's program um, that's helped participants achieve self-sufficiency. As you know, these programs differ widely in participation and success across the states, but even at the height of the recession, 60 percent of those enrolled in Washington's ENT programs found employment, and in one study, less, th less than half remained on government assistance two years after starting the program. So I was wondering, Ms. Golden, can you further explain how ENT programs promote, not discourage work when jobs are available? Sure. I mean, I think I would highlight a couple of things you said and then build on them. You highlighted the way SNAP encourages, not discourages work, and its effect in stabilizing people's lives so they can work and move up. Um, and second, the role of employment and training programs, because the big barrier for the low-income person trying to make that jump is typically going to be about getting the promotion, having the skills, the in doing the bipartisan workforce reauthorization that the Congress did, the Congress, both parties, said really a post-secondary credential is likely to be crucial for moving up. So that puts employment and training front and center. And Washington State, as you say, is a leader. Um, what the Farm Bill includes, in addition to the um, unlimited matching funds that exist for employment and training that in SNAP, that, as I said, many states are not seriously drawing down, it adds pilots, 10 pilots, um, which ought to create lessons about doing this really, really well. And one of the things we're excited about is that there's been a lot of innovation in the employment and training arena, community colleges, workforce programs, but it isn't necessarily known to SNAP agencies. And so building that connection, using those pilots so that people can make that leap, I think is a very exciting next step. And in the end, we're, we should be focused on the results we're seeing in our state. We've seen um, strong results from these programs, and hopefully the pilots will give us innovative new ideas that different states are trying that continue to inform everyone in programs. Absolutely. And the issue for states is not the flexibility to do those things. They have that. It's um, having the ideas and making them work. No. Thank you. Um, I yield back, Mr. Chair. The gentlelady's time has expired. Mr. Meehan.